Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our final live stream of the day today. Uh, last but not least, of course, we have a very special assembly match for you. Uh, two competitors, JJ and Andrew from Rock Valley College. Uh, they will be competing in the grand finals, which consists of uh, three games of gem race where the player with the most gems wins. Uh, so that's going to be exciting. We're going to have the other players sign into the room real quick. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Assembly is a game where the players draft obstacles to place for one another to avoid. And they also decide a level. And when a level is decided by the game, both players have time to build in it. And then after time is up, they race to the randomly generated spawned gems. And whoever has the most gems in the end wins. Um, now... Uh, just before we get going here, I'd like to correct myself uh, from some of my statements earlier. Tonight, there is a tournament not only for Battle Royale, but Assembly as well. Starting at, I believe, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, a tournament will begin. The player who wins the most Battle Royale... Ma Royale blah, 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 sorry. The player who wins the most Battle Royale matches and who gains the most Assembly experience in a certain amount of time wins the tournament and those players are eligible to receive gift cards as their prizes so that's gonna be exciting also uh if you're catching us live be sure to hit that follow button up i think it's in this corner uh, to follow us at black rocket excuse me twitch.tv slash black rocket llc for all of your live esports content and of course if you don't catch us here live be sure to subscribe to our youtube page at youtube.com slash brp clips where you can catch all of the highlights and exciting student projects weekly now we're waiting on the other student to join here um once again, JJ will be the blue player, player one, and Andrew will be the red player, player two. Um, and aha, uh -huh, that's it. Of course, how could I forget? Um, our lovely sponsor, Simply PHP. For all of your custom web programming needs, choose Simply PHP. Now we are uh, waiting here for our other competitors to join. Um, as soon as I get the uh, the okay go, I think we're gonna. All right, looks like we're gonna have to take a quick reset real quick. We're gonna send you guys to break and we'll be right back in when the action starts. See you soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back here again in our drafting phase. Um, and just while the players are uh, kind of re, uh, re assimilating themselves, for those of you who wish to influence the match live here with us, go ahead and open up assembly in a tab on your internet browser. And the vote code is HHNM where whatever votes you put in votes for, they can affect the match. For example, the events that we see happen all the time, like Quake, or Lights Out, or Far Out. A lot of those events can be very detrimental or helpful to our players, and I'm interested to see how you guys feel about this match. All right, so as we go into the draft here, we see seemingly the same builds from both players. We see both players with the vacuum. Both players have the, uh, the robot enemy. Both players have the bat. There is a lock. Um, the only difference is JJ has decided to bring the two-way cannon, and Andrew has opted for the spikes. Now, once again, for the millionth time in a row, we are back again looking at Toxic Knight's beautiful face. And we are, once again, looking at a ginormous level where gems can either spawn all the way up to the north side or all the way far down in the bottom right. And it's very interesting to see how players choose to throw their obstacles. Andrew rushing immediately out of the gate, throwing a million lock blocks on the field, almost using up all of his build bar, which he actually is about to here. Um, looks like we have a couple hidden spikes here behind some of these toxic barrels. Uh, JJ opting for the key strategy once again. He's actually going to put his key in an interesting spot opting to put the key in an unobtainable location. Now, if a gem spawns underneath these lock blocks in and the key is completely unobtainable, the players are then actually forced to use what's called the hammer. Now, each player is given, I believe, three hammers in gem race, and the hammer has the ability, if the player clicks an obstacle of their enemies on the screen, it will completely delete that one square of objects. Now, if this happens, the object is still there for the player who placed that object, and that can be seriously detrimental, especially if you set up a trap right at spawn. You will never be able to get through it, but your enemy will. 
And that's an incredibly important aspect of assembly because sometimes we see a lot of players opt for that, ha, huh, I'm just gonna trap him at spawn, and then they pay the price later on down the line. So we've got about 10 seconds to go here. JJ has just about finished up his build meter. He has, Andrew has as well. And now we're going to see how these players decide to tackle their levels. Alright, once again, that vote code is HHNM for those of you interested in influencing our game today. Uh, that will change for every match. Alright, so in we go. Looks like both players are, as expected, immediately going to get caught by this vacuum. One of these players needs to decide which traps they need to get rid of in order to actually make this course doable. Unless they really think that they can jump out. Seemingly no hammers have been used yet. Both players are still continuously being pulled into this vacuum here. This vacuum enemy, uh, excuse me, this vacuum enemy in, uh, collaboration with that cannon is definitely going to be a deadly setup. Looks like Andrew is going to be escaping first and he is going to be racing through the stage. Now we see JJ escaping as well. We're going to see lights out here. This is going to be dangerous for both of our players because now not only can I not see, but they can't see the levels either. Looks like that first gem is going to be on the top side in the middle there. JJ unfortunately going to get knocked out by those hidden spikes. He's going to be forced to go back. Um, Andrew's gonna go back as well, seemingly after grabbing that key, and now the gem has moved. The gem is now in a unobtainable locked box. Is he, is he going to use a hammer to break it in which he is? The next gem spawn is all the way in the north. We're gonna see how JJ opts to get up to this one, because this one is actually blocked by a red case gem instead of the blue. Gonna see Rotate coming out here. This is definitely one of my least favorite events just because of how disorienting it is to me and obviously the players that are playing as well. Andrew looking like he's trying to take the high route here even though he's got his lock boxes. He has already collected the key and that gem is going to sneakily move away. The gem has now reappeared and Andrew is going to grab it. I didn't even see it respawn. It looked like it might have come out right underneath him. Andrew now with a two gem lead, the next gem spawn gonna be close, he's got five seconds, can he grab it? He can! And the last one is up to the left, but unfortunately, he's going to fall down without grabbing that one, and that is going to put Andrew in the lead by three gems. We're gonna quickly get these players back into the lobby, and we will be right back with the action in just a sec. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back again in the drafting phase. We are seeing uh, the invisible blocks now from JJ coming out as well as the vacuum. Both players have opted again to pick the vacuum. Uh, how exciting. Um, definitely, please, if you trap your opponent in spawn, it will be more detrimental to you in the end than it will to them. And of course, they already know I can't stand Toxic Knight and they're picking it again. <laughs> There are a bunch of awesome maps in this game for viewers who are not familiar with Assembly. Toxic Knight just happens to be the crowd favorite. I have no idea why. But anyway, back to the strategies. So JJ here, opting to go with the invisible blocks, the vacuum, the flamethrower, the two-way cannon, and the robot enemy once again. Now, from Andrew's side, we see the vacuum, the robot enemy, the bat, the lock block, and the crusher. I've mentioned before in previous streams that the Crusher is a really unique object, actually. The Crusher, after it's come down, you can actually jump on top of it and it will be passive and lift you up to areas you couldn't previously get to just by jumping regularly. So you can actually really use the Crushers in Toxic Knight as an advantage to get up to the higher sections quicker than your opponent. So taking a look at the strategy here, now we see... Um, Andrew going for the same lockbox strategy where he's going to put the key way far off and it looks like JJ is going to take another page out of the same book as before and set up yet another mean and devastating trap for himself and Andrew. Now we see crushers over top of these gems though, that's going to be interesting to get to, especially because if the crusher is only one block high, you're not really going to have the opportunity to bait the crusher, you're just going to get immediately stomped and then sent back to the spawn again. Alright, we can see here, um, not... Oh, that's right. Okay, so no spikes are here now. There are absolutely no spikes, so the players don't have to worry about 
uh, spikes hiding behind objects, spikes, um, like, on the sides of gems to make wall jumps really hard. These guys are strictly going with the obstacle-based blocking strategy. And of course, we see over here all of this blue mess is placed by JJ. So he really does not want to have any fun alongside Andrew. Those invisible blocks are going to be super mean, and when they think there's an, uh, an opening or an opportunity, there won't be. Looks like Andrew has pretty much built himself all the way out again using the crushers and the lockboxes. No bat enemies, no robot enemies, nothing nasty, just crushers and locks. So we're going to see how these players actually handle this level now. With that big mean trap at the beginning. Yeah. Alright, so immediately we're just watching the players get pulled away here. Absolutely no fun allowed, but remember... Andrew does have a three gem lead here. If JJ is not able to collect any gems, then that's pretty much going to solidify him the game. Even though we do we do have one more match, but still, if this trap is just going to continuously be there, and it looks like JJ is actually going to be the first one to escape this time. Now Andrew's out and ready to go. Let's see where that first gem is. The first gem all the way up to the top right. Those invisible boxes definitely going to be somewhat helpful here to blocking the crushers, but I'm not too sure how helpful necessarily. Andrew going to be able to sneak by one of his own crushers because the crusher cannot see under the block box beneath him. That's going to be helpful. And now JJ seemingly stuck at the beginning while Andrew is making his way towards the right side of the level. Going to opt to go back to the beginning to at least give him the chance to get any gems that were placed under his locked boxes, where the gem is actually moved now, and he's going to require his own key to get there. Unfortunately, JJ going to get taken out by that two-way cannon, of course, living up to its name, going to be able to take JJ out without him knowing. That is going to be yet another gem for Andrew, and if he collects more than one gem, looks like he might be able to do it here. Um, if JJ is not able to collect any other gems, that is actually going to be the win. Oh, looks like unfortunately Andrew going to get blocked out by these hidden boxes here. Is he going to opt to take one away with his hammer? Or is the gem going to move away before it's too soon? JJ making his way across the level, trying to get his way over to that gem now. Maybe just... So, oh, here we go. The gem is now moved, and of course it is in a location that is blocked by one of JJ's own traps, and he is not able to grab a gem there. That is going to push Andrew up to five gems, with JJ still at zero. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back again for this final draft phase of this exciting assembly match. We are going to see what maps these players choose and what items these players choose. I'm definitely interested to see what kind of strategies can come out from JJ to see if he can even pull back into this match that Andrew has so significantly taken over. JJ going for the seemingly same bucket of items he had before, as well as Andrew... Nothing really new coming to the table here except for those sticky blocks. I definitely like the, the sticky block idea a lot. That item is really unique and really useful to have, especially in areas that are tough to squeeze through. If you put the sticky blocks in a smaller area, it makes it really difficult to traverse that location because when you jump, it carries all of the momentum from the direction you're holding. All right. So immediately we're going to be going in here. I do believe this is Power Plant. I could be wrong. This could be Smog Factory, but it is one of the two. Immediately we see another of the same uh, vacuum strategy from JJ. As we've seen in the past two matches, I don't think this is a good use of your materials. I personally think that... Okay, so now Andrew hears me and he's going to set up a vacuum of his own. I personally believe that maybe saving your materials for more locations where it is a lot more difficult to jump to and blocking more locations of gems may be more beneficial to your game plan in the end. However, I am no professional assembly player and I will let you dictate the outcome of this match. Currently now we see some robots placed in the top right corner from Andrew. JJ also moving away after I said these things. Uh, we're going to see some lockboxes coming down once again to block out some of those gems. Now, that's an interesting idea. 
I do like making those lockboxes completely blocking gems, because if it can force your opponent to waste a hammer that they would use elsewhere, that could still require them to get the key in the end. And if they don't get the key, and a gem moves under another lockbox, then they're out of luck until they find the key. Alright, so as we can see here, uh, JJ just going to invisibly block box all of these gems seemingly. There is literally going to be no way to get to these unless Andrew really whips out the hammers here. JJ going to be maxing out on his build capacity here unless he decides to take something away from um, the, the, the cluster that is at spawn. Andrew just over halfway here. He still has some room, but he's only got about seven seconds. Um, if you guys want to influence this match, the vote code is KEJD. But you've only got a few minutes to go here, and we will see the outcome of this match uh, unveil before our eyes. All right, both players spawning in right here, right now. Let's see how they choose to tackle this one. And it looks like it's just going to be a lot of um, sitting and waiting. Because as soon as you jump, you're going to get pulled into the other enemies. And unless someone uses a hammer here, both players are just going to be stuck. Oh, looks like we got a little bit of momentum forwards from Andrew, but not too much else. He's trying to jump over all of these traps, but it looks like he's getting caught by that invisible block. Once again, the first gem is all the way down here in the bottom right hand of the screen. So if one of our players can get over here, that could be easily obtainable. But of course, um, I believe it was JJ who placed all of those boxes. So if a gem spawns in some of these disappearing boxes, he's not going to be able to obtain it. All of the gems are ripe for Andrew's taking. If they can escape the, the spawn camp. Looks like both players still just seriously struggling here. Hopefully, oh, looks like JJ was able to escape, but can he make it to the first gem? Let's see where it is. Looks, looking like it's all the way up in the top right. Hopefully, he's got some hammers left because those three robots are patrolling that area incredibly heavily. All right. Now we're going to be seeing Rotate definitely going to slow down the player's uh, movement here. Going to be waiting for the movement to slow down and stop so that they're not as disoriented as I am. Ooh, unfortunately JJ going to fall there and that is going to make him uh, forced to wall jump all the way back up, wasting a lot of time. That gem has moved now and now it is all the way back in the front of the stage, right where Andrew can get it. And of course, uh, JJ, if those boxes were placed by him, he cannot break them. Only Andrew can. But Andrew is still seemingly stuck under this vacuum and there's only three seconds left in this match. And that is going to be the end. We're going to see the tiebreaker here. But in this 30 seconds, is it going to be possible for these players to even get to this gem? If JJ is able to escape, he's not going to be able to grab the gem. Looks like Andrew's going to be able to make it. Can he break? Does he have the hammers left to grab the gem underneath these boxes? And he does! Congratulations to Andrew, taking away the tiebreaker, taking away the game, and that is going to be your assembly match for today. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jake. Remember, subscribe to us on YouTube for all of our awesome esports highlights at youtube.com slash brpclips. Follow us here live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash blackrocketllc. And of course, last but not least, thank you so much to our sponsor, Simply PHP, for sponsoring us for all of your custom web programming needs. Choose and use Simply PHP. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See you next time.